11 Alive News at 6 p.m. starts now. First tonight at 6, long lines of unclaimed luggage and passengers sleeping on the floor. Chaos at Atlanta's airport continues following a cyber outage that disrupted major airlines. This is out of control. It's not, it's not okay. So I just, I want them to take responsibility, accountability. Tonight, the hardest hit airline Delta outlining what went wrong and what it's doing to help travelers. Plus, there aren't as many showers out there right now, but we are tracking some and we're looking ahead to see a potential break to this muggy pattern. And new tonight at six, Six Flags Over Georgia has a new rule for children and teenagers. What parents need to know before it takes effect this Friday. Right now at six, frustration building at Atlanta's airport as travelers deal with yet another day of disruptions. Hundreds of flights have been delayed or canceled. The result of a domino effect that started Friday when the cybersecurity company CrowdStrike pushed a faulty update that took down Microsoft systems worldwide. Now, while most major airlines have recovered, Atlanta-based Delta Airlines is still struggling. It's called off 16% of its scheduled flights on Monday alone. And in an update this afternoon, CEO Ed Bastian said crews are working around the clock to get operations back to normal. Yeah, they're trying to work on that right now. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says that his agency has received hundreds of complaints, and tonight he is calling Delta Airlines customer service conditions unacceptable. 11 Alliance Brittany Klein-Peter joining us live from Hartsfield-Jackson with a look at how these issues are affecting these frustrated travelers out there. Brittany? Good evening, Ron. As you mentioned, the Secretary of Transportation saying Delta will be held accountable, saying he has received those complaints of continued disruptions. And since we've been here today, those disruptions are visible. There's lines of people trying to get their bags, and then there's hundreds of bags just outside of carousels like you're seeing right now. These bags out here unclaimed, their owner nowhere to be found. Airport officials telling us that these bags that you're seeing have arrived just today as they continue to sort this all out. Uh, it's been a mess. It's, it's been crazy. I've never had this kind of experience traveling before. The effects linger from a worldwide computer outage four days ago, and they're still very visible inside the world's busiest airport. I sat here from 5 o'clock yesterday, and I'm still here. And for missing baggage. Feeling a little bit, uh, what they say, vulnerable, because I ain't got my luggage, and it's kind of important to me. Still looking. To giving up on the airlines altogether. I'm trying to get out of the airport because I can drive to Savannah before I can fly to Savannah. Tonight, many are arriving at the conclusion that they may not make it home today. And here we are. I'm not getting to my final destination. They said not into Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. It really is all hands on deck out here. We've seen dozens of Delta officials working to help folks find their bags. They're also offering travel reimbursements as well as a section on their website where you can submit those expenses you paid for hotels or food during all of this mess. So it is a, a very active front out here as they work to try to remedy this. Reporting live from Hartsville, Jackson, Brittany Kleinpeter, 11 Alive News. And our heart goes out to those travelers as well. Brittany, thanks a lot. And while most major airlines took a hit from the crowd strike outage, by Monday morning, Delta accounted for about 60% of the flight cancellations around the globe. So why was Delta hit so hard? The outage affected the software airlines used to check in those customers. However, Delta was likely the only airline that had its cruise scheduling software hit. CEO Ed uh, Bastian says that the problem was even worse because it happened during Delta's busiest travel weekend of the summer, leaving few options for rebooking. We have the full story on 11alive.com with some uh, helpful resources for travelers out there who might be looking for information about flight cancellations, delays, and flight vouchers. Brittany was talking about that. Just text the word delays to the number on your screen. We're going to send you a link directly to your phone. That's 404-885-7600. All right, let's get to weather right now with your weather impact forecast. Yeah, our chief meteorologist Chris Holcomb standing by for us. And Chris, you've been talking about some of these scattered stun uh, storms that we've been experiencing all summer long. Exactly. We've been dealing with them a lot this week, but we're finally beginning to see a little bit of a break in the pattern. We're still going to have to wait a few days before that pattern breaks, though. Right now, not a lot of rain here in the 
the metro Atlanta area as you zoom in a little bit tighter. You see again nothing major going on here. We have some sunshine just mixing in with a few clouds where we have been watching some of those showers that have been a little bit stronger. That's mainly in northwest Georgia. We were watching some of this uh, going through near Rome through Floyd County and then they pushed up into areas of Bartow County. We have a few of those over near Cartersville right now. This one is the strongest one in the northern parts of Pickens County and in southern Gilmer County. Heavy rain with that and we're seeing a little bit more thunder and lightning in association with this one. Again, it's not severe, but it stretches from Ludeville on up again just in the southern parts of Gilmer County stretching over toward the Jasper area. And then we had a few showers that were a little bit heavier here on the south side a little bit earlier and you can see how those move up to the north and east. And then these showers up in Rabin County. We had one move over Lake Burton just a little while ago with some heavy rain. Those are exiting the state as well. In the metro area, we're looking OK on the south side. Only a couple little spotty showers there. For the rest of the evening hours, we're going to be watching that potential for a couple of scattered showers to redevelop. And really, we're stuck in this pattern for a while of these daily showers where we have some dry hours during the day and then scattered rainstorms. And any of those that develop could have some wind and heavy rain with them. Stay with us. We're going to talk more about that break that we see in the pattern and let you know when it's going to get here. All right, Chris, thank you so much. We'll see you shortly. Tonight, Democratic supporters rallying around Vice President Kamala Harris as she launches her campaign for the White House. President Joe Biden and endorsing her as a Democratic nominee Sunday at the same time that he announced he was dropping out of the race. And while Vice President Harris is yet to speak about her candidacy, both Georgia senators are already voicing their support. I've gotten to know Kamala Harris over the years. Uh, I count her a friend. Uh, I was pleased to talk to her yesterday uh, and to express to her personally my support and endorsement. Uh, for a candidacy to be the next president of the United States. I was pleased to endorse uh, the vice president. She is prepared. She is ready to win. Uh, she has my full support. Meanwhile, the Harris campaign says it raised more than $80 million in its first 24 hours, which the campaign says was the largest single day haul in U.S. campaign history. So whether Vice President Kamala Harris will actually win the Democratic nomination remains to be seen. And everyone is already speculating about whether or not she can actually win over voters in November. 11 Live's Teresa Bowles live for us in Atlanta. And Teresa, Harris could be the first woman elected president, but women you spoke with today said that doesn't necessarily mean that they will back her at the ballot box. That's right, Jennifer. Voters here at Piedmont Park recognize how historic this moment is right now. However, they are looking at Harris's policies and watching what she'll do next. Vice President Kamala Harris has a chance to make history again. This is a 2024. Um, it, I think it's time for the woman to, to stand up strong and be a real leader. If nominated and elected, Harris would be the first woman president. But voters wonder if history will repeat itself. Secretary Hillary Clinton couldn't beat former President Donald Trump. Eight years later, is America really ready for a woman president, especially a black one? So I know it's a big ticket item, but I, I hope that that's not too much of an uphill battle considering the facts and statistics and her experience. Anna Outson says it doesn't matter what Harris looks like. She believes Harris is the best pick for the ballot. I think that having someone who's more than qualified um, step in in place of him should resolve some of that doubt that a lot of Democrats and undecided voters have had. Mel is one of those undecided voters. Healthcare, education is number one. She says when she looks back on what Harris has done as vice president, she hasn't seen improvements in the schools. Mel and other other voters are hoping Harris will use this time to speak up about her policies. I want to see her take a stand on prosecution of marijuana charges. Also on Kirsten Kilpatrick's mind is expanding the Supreme Court because Roe versus Wade was a piece of history reversed. She says Harris has her vote, but she's looking to the future for real change. I think millennials want to see some action. Gotten some Supreme Court decisions that have really upset us, and I want to know that if I elect someone, that they're going to use the executive office to actually make changes now that they do have the liberties to make those changes. I don't want to see four years of the same policies. 
Now, Harris's nomination is not official yet. The Democratic National Convention is about less than a month away. Live in Atlanta, Teresa Bowles, 11 Alive News. All right, Teresa, thanks a lot. Still ahead tonight, this is Gwinnett County is going to be a key voting block for Democrats if they expect to win Georgia. How Harris's candidacy could make a difference there. That's coming up in about five minutes. And still to come, everything you need to know about the new chaperone policy at Six Flags Over Georgia and how the park hopes it will improve safety. That's coming up.